What's up, but it's Rob. This is Apparel Success. And in this video here, I'm going to share with you information that's going to help you grow your clothing brand and become successful with your brand. And what I'm going to share with you in this video is the story of just how long it took for me to get any sales for my brand from people that I don't know and just how grueling of a journey it was for me to learn all of the stuff that you need to learn in order for you to become successful with your clothing brand. I'm going to share this story with you because number one, I feel comfortable sharing this story with you now since I've had months do over $70,000 for my clothing brand and I have thousands of customers here in Canada. And number two, I think that by sharing this story with you, it's going to be a very real story where it's not just me telling you how great I am all the time and how I'm some godlike dude who knew all of this stuff from the beginning. I really want to portray for you realistically what the journey looked like, how much I had to learn, how bad I was at first, and how you can just grow over the years and get better and better at this until you're successful. So I hope you enjoy. Apparel Success is sponsored by my buds over at Brand Crowd. Brand Crowd's a logo maker tool. You type in the name of the logo that you want to have made, hit enter. Thousands of logos will come up. You choose the logo that you like. You edit, refine that logo as long as you want for free until it's perfect. This is a Hundo P design I had made for my own clothing brand using Brand Crowd. If you're interested, head over to brandcrowd.com forward slash apparel success and you can get 66% off at checkout. All right. Every single clothing brand that's starting up wants the exact same thing to happen. When they launch, they want their clothing brand to just become the next big supreme, to take off, to go viral, to become the next big fashion brand. Overnight, they want things to just take off with the word of mouth, where things just spread. They don't have to do any work, and it just blows up. And every single clothing brand owner, when they're thinking about this from the beginning, fails to think about how they'd even have enough inventory to supply that number of people if it did take off where they'd even get the investment money to do that how they'd even have a website that would be able to handle that many orders coming in all the time and that much traffic how they'd be able to you know just handle that amount of fulfillment and fulfilling all the orders for all those customers all of the returns and exchanges for all of those customers these are things that people that are just starting up for the first time it does not enter their brain it's something that they just do not think about what they think about instead is they think about their brand becoming super successful. They've done it. They're the one. They made a successful brand and everybody's going to look at them and be like, wow, you made this super successful clothing brand and you're the best. Oh my God, you know, I'm so jealous of you and now you're famous. That's what people literally think when they're, when they're starting up a brand is that that's what's going to happen to them. Okay, got that out of the way. For me, with my own clothing brand, when I launched my brand, it's a Canadian lifestyle brand called K-Bud. K-Bud is slang here in Canada for like K-Bud, sure bud, whatever bud. Um, when I launched my brand, you know, I was hoping that the brand would fly out of the gates, that it would just crush, that it would take off, that it would become this huge sensation in Canada right out of the get-go. And I had to face this really harsh reality after I launched that right after I launched, actually, it was kind of hard to even get to like 500 followers on Instagram. And it was kind of hard to even get anybody that I didn't know to buy my brand. And it was kind of hard to like get anybody to hear about it. And it took a lot of work to get anybody to, to know about my brand. And so that was like, not only did it not explode, but it was like, really hard work to get in front of anybody. I started my brand in May of 2016. And for the first six months after launching my brand, the only people that I was really able to sell my brand to were friends and family. And the only reason that they were really buying was just to support me and to support the brand. So it was really this eye-opening experience the first six months, having to drop my ego and realize that the brand that I had created, the brand that I started with on the very first day, just simply was not good enough to travel via word of mouth. I just had to face that reality. In order for this to work, in order for this to start traveling word of mouth, and in order for people to really want to start buying it, 
I'm going to have to make some major changes to it. I'm going to have to improve the website drastically. I'm going to have to get really cool people to support the brand. I'm going to have to tweak the logo, improve the logo, and improve every single area of the brand. Because when I first started this brand, I literally thought that I literally didn't even know what to think when I first started up the brand because I had no experience doing this before. So I remember me and my partner, we just found some designer and got him to design a logo for us. And then we were like, okay, we'll slap it on a t-shirt and try to sell. And we didn't know all of the strategies that I teach on this channel. We didn't know any of that. And so it was really this learning process right from the beginning. Now, when I look back to the first year growing my clothing brand and just how bad it was, how little I knew about this space. Like when I tell you that it was a blank slate and I had zero advantages in this industry, I mean it when I say I had absolutely zero knowledge when it came to growing a clothing brand, how to grow a brand, how to even ship out an order. I literally had never sent a piece of mail in my entire life before starting up my clothing brand. When I think about that and I ask myself, well, what eventually made this work for my brand? What was it? What it was is that there's a growth mindset. There's something known as the growth mindset and there's also something known as personality traits. And before you click off this video, I'm telling you this is, this is going to be really important. Most people, what they do is they launch a brand, it wouldn't work for them, it doesn't work for them, and then they go, oh, well, the brand just must not have been good enough, I gotta, I gotta give up, it's just never gonna work. And that's just never the way that I viewed it. When it didn't work, I learned something, I learned, oh, well, it's not working, maybe there's something that I can change, maybe there's something that I can tweak, and it's this idea that everything is learnable, and that we're all sort of these blank slates and that you can just learn what you need to learn. And as you learn, you apply. And that's all that I did with my clothing brand. And that is the reason why my clothing brand ended up, you know, four years later having $30,000, $40,000 a month. And five years later having $70,000 a month and things like that. And that's also the reason why this YouTube channel has worked as well. Is it's just learning. It's learning what people want. It's learning how to deliver that message. It's learning how to offer more value and just again and again getting better and better at it and just not giving up and just learning. And another aspect of this that allowed me to make this work is something known as the personality trait of openness. There's a personality test at understandmyself.com. I'm not being paid to share this personality test with you, but I highly recommend that you take it because it's backed by science, it's backed by comparing different people who have taken the test, thousands and thousands of people, and it'll rank you on something known as openness. And in order for you to succeed as an entrepreneur and do well as an entrepreneur, you basically have to score high in this trait of openness. Because open people are able to think outside the box, do unconventional things, sort of have a non-traditional lifestyle, which is sort of the definition of entrepreneurship. And that's also one thing that I had going for me. I'm open to new ideas. I'm open to different ways of learning. I think outside of the box. And so the combination of that with the growth mindset just helped like crazy in terms of mindset. But let's go back to the actual technical parts of the clothing brand in terms of what I did in that stage to really get the brand up and running and getting sales with people that I didn't know. What I did is I realized that I had to take a step backwards. The way that I had written out all of the words for my brand in terms of the About Us page, I call it the Our Story page on my, my brand's website. The tagline for my brand was horrible. Nobody could really understand it. It used to say representing the raw attitude of authentic Canadians. I know that doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> At the time, you know, I, I just really didn't understand that. And then I had to take a step back and just I just wrote down words forever. Like, what could it, what could this be? What is what is it exactly that my brand's going after? Well, it's slang. Where's the slang set? It's set in rural Canada. So representing rural Canada came out of that. And that's what my brand is about. It's the way that we speak in rural Canada. So it just became a perfect match. And when I changed that on the website, when I changed that in terms of what I put on the Instagram account, what I put on the Our Story page, and I wrote the story around that, it really helped like crazy. I also changed the 
logo that we came out with originally to this logo that's right above me here, the Crest logo, that just sort of has a bit of more nature in it and it's just a bit kind of cooler and I think it just looks sicker. So we ended up putting that on a hoodie in October or November, about six months later after we launched and we ended up selling a couple thousand dollars worth of that hoodie. Just from those small tweaks, the About Us page, a couple small tweaks on the website, making it look a little bit more professional to build some credibility, and then redesigning the main logo to look a little bit sicker, a little bit cooler. And we ended up getting onto an influencer just by sending them free clothing. And just through doing that, six months later, we had a month where we did you know, $2,000 worth of sales for one hoodie. We hadn't spent any money on ads back at that time. It just all happened on Instagram. And so from there, you know, I learned a lot of lessons about social proof. I learned a lot of lessons about just sort of how important perception is about the brand. And I just kept tweaking and tweaking and cultivating and cultivating. And so I'm telling you this right now, if you're starting up a clothing brand, so that you understand it's okay to suck at the beginning. And it's okay to make big changes. You know, hopefully you don't invest in too much inventory that sticks you in a certain logo because you've just invested in so much of that one item and in that one logo. But granted, you don't do that. There's always room for massive change. And it's in those tweaks, it's in those changes that you find the sweet spot for your brand. And it's just about chipping away until you get there over the months, over the years. And I know that you're going to do it if you have the right mindset and if you really take this seriously. If you got a lot of value out of this video, please hit the like button for me. It really helps me get these videos out there. And let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. And if you haven't already, check out my free clothing brand marketing masterclass. All you have to do to get access is go to apparelsuccess.com masterclass. You can watch the whole thing for free and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.